Number 227, we are almost done, guys. But before I jump in, I just wanted to say a few things. First, uh, I hope these videos have been helpful for you uh, in your studies. When I was taking the GMAT, the thing that helped me the most was watching other people do problems and watching how they reasoned out the problems. I think it really helped me on test day figure out shortcuts and how to, how to save time on the quant section. The other thing is is, uh, you know, John Wooden once said that failure to prepare is preparation for failure. And I think by going online and chatting with people and, and watching these videos and buying test prep books and, and doing diagnostics, you're doing, you know, you're, you're preparing yourself well for the test. And uh, I just want to say good luck and, uh, and Godspeed. Okay, number 227 says if x plus y equals a and x minus y equals b then 2xy is what? Well this is going to be a problem where we need to figure out the relation between x and y and a and b. So let's add these together. What do we get? 2x equals a plus b. Now let's subtract. And when we subtract becomes negative x plus y equals b and we have 2y equals a plus b. So now we have two brand new equations that we can use to figure out 2xy. Well what is 2xy? 2xy is the same as saying 2x times y, right? We have 2x. We know 2x is a plus b. What is y? y is going to be a, oh I'm sorry, a minus b. y is going to be a minus b over 2. So a plus b, y is going to be a minus b over 2. a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. And on the bottom, in the uh, as the denominator, we have 2. And that is a. Number 228. So it gives us P R S T U. It says an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is equal to the sum of the preceding term and a constant. If the list of letters shown above is an arithmetic sequence, which of the following must also be an arithmetic sequence? So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where this number equals the previous number plus a constant. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be an arithmetic sequence because 2 is 1 plus 1, 3 is 2 plus 1, 4 is 3 plus 1. The fact that each of these numbers is the previous number plus 1 makes that 1 the constant. So this would be an arithmetic sequence. You know, another, another one might be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Everything is uh, you know, the constant is, is, is 2 between each of these values. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look at the different answer choices. They have 1, 2, and 3. And for 1, they have 2p, 2r, 2s, 2t, 2u. Would this, uh, would this still be an arithmetic sequence? The answer is yes. If you were to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you would get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, like I've, uh, as I just mentioned, is an arithmetic sequence. So yes, that is. Number two, p minus 3, r minus 3, s minus 3, t minus 3, and u minus 3. Would this be an arithmetic sequence? Yeah, because you're subtracting by the exact same number. So no matter what that, uh, you know, what p, r, s, t, and u are, I mean, they're still that constant. Uh, for example, if we used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we subtracted 3, to, if we subtracted 3, we would get negative 2, negative 1 is 0, 1, and 2. And negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. 0 is negative 1 plus 1. You know, the plus 1 is the same constant. It's the constant uh, for this entire sequence. So 2 is definitely true. Number 3 says p squared, r squared, s squared, t squared, u squared. This would not be true. The reason is 
we plugged in these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we'd get 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. And 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 minus 4 is 5, not a constant. So your answer will be D, which is 1 and 2. 229 says right triangle PQRs to be constructed in the XY plane so that the right angle is at P and PR is parallel to the x-axis. If X, the x and y coordinates of PQ and R are to be integers that satisfy, okay, so these points are integers that satisfy the inequalities negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5, and 6 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 16. How many different triangles with properties, with these properties, could be constructed? Uh, okay, they tell us that this is P, this is Q, and this is R. And it's on this plane, and it has to fit within these values here. Okay. How do we solve this? Well, I don't need to actually draw the graph, because having to draw each triangle, you know, if I want to draw slim triangles and fatter triangles and shorter triangles and, and taller triangles, it would take a long time to actually draw out all the different possibilities. So instead, what we're going to do is do some counting. 5, negative 4, we want to look at each of these uh, each of these edges, so to speak, and figure out what are all the different possibilities that, uh, what, what are all the different possible uh, integers that they could be? We know that P and Q have to be uh, between negative 4 and 5. So what that means is there are 10 different possibilities of what P could be, right? Because it could be negative 4, it could be negative 3, it could be negative 2. Well, actually, no. You know what? P could actually only be, there could only be 9 things that P could be. Because you could have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There are 10 different points that uh, are within these limits. But P can't be all of these points. Because if P was 5, then Q, what would Q be? Q, there's nothing bigger than that. So P could be negative 4, negative 3, all the way up to 3. And those are 9 possibilities. What could Q be? Well, Q could be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So P, uh, Q could also be, uh, be 9, uh, have 9 different properties, or, or 9 different possibilities. Okay, so there's 9 and there's 9. All right, well, what about R? What could R be? Well, let's see. If we are looking at how wide the triangle is, then we are looking here, and there are either 10 or 11 possibilities, yeah? So P is still limited just as it was when we were calculating the height. So P could have 10 different possibilities because it could go, it could be 6 or 7 all the way up to 15. And R could be 16, 15, 14, all the way down to 5. So R would have, I guess R would have 10 possibilities as well. Okay. Hmm. Let's see what happens when we multi well, you know what? I think maybe this one's tricky. I think maybe I made a mistake here. Okay. So, instead of 9 and 9, let's look at it a different way. Okay. So, p could be any of the values, right? p could be any of of the of of the uh, of the ten different values, because whatever p is, q could be. Okay, yeah, I see what I got, got wrong. Okay, so a right triangle looks like this, but a right triangle could actually be upside down as well. So what I said earlier about p having to have nine different values is actually not correct, because if we were upside down, p could definitely be. P could definitely be, uh, you know, five. So what P actually could be is, you know, there are actually 10 different possibilities for P. And Q would be limited by 9s because 
whichever one that uh, p is, that then q can't be that. So q has nine possibilities. Then when we look at p and r, that means p has 11 possibilities because we're counting from 6 to 16, and that means r has 10 possibilities because we're subtracting 1. Okay, I think this might be... Yeah, this is the more correct way to do it because we are actually taking into account uh, an upside-down right triangle. Okay, so let's multiply 9 by 10 by 11 by 10. These become 100. That becomes 99. That becomes 9900. Okay, is that the right answer? Yes. C. Okay, 230, the final problem. 230 says the value of 2 to the negative 14th plus 2 to the negative 15th plus 2 to the negative 16th plus 2 to the negative 17th over 5 is how many times the value of 2 to the negative 17th. So how many times the value of 2 to the negative 17th? And we're looking for x. All right. Well, the first thing we want to do is cross multiply, obviously. So we get 2 to the negative 14th plus 2 to the negative 15th, all that good stuff. Down here, 5 and 2 to the negative 17th is the same as 5 uh, times 1 over 2 the, to the 17th. That's going to turn into 5 over 2 to the 17th. And it would cause us to multiply. So what we end up with is 5 on the bottom, and then 2 to the 17th multiplied to each of these numbers up here. Well, what's 2 to the negative 14th power times 2 to the 17th? Well, it's going to be 17 minus 14. So 2 to the 17th minus 14 is going to be 2 to the 3rd, plus 2 to the 17th minus negative 15, or, or minus 15 is going to be 2 to the second power. That is going to be 2 to the first power, and that is going to be 2 to the 0. That's going to be 8, 4, 2, and 1. We add these together. 15 over 5. That equals 3. Ah, and looks like we are done with the problem solving section. I hope you have had fun watching these videos. Actually, eh, probably wasn't too fun, huh? Because it's never fun to study for a test. But hopefully these videos were helpful. Uh, the next set that I want to work on is uh, it's problem solving. So I will post a message when we, when we get to those questions. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope these videos were helpful. Toodaloo and ciao.